The year was 2017. Despacito was on the radio, Ralph Shaheen was in the booth, and Marvin Muscan was pretending to blow rides to let his teammate buy to win the championship. That's that's a bummer. It was a good time to be a middle class suburban family. You could get two tacos for 99 cents, and a $5 foot long cost you $5 for a foot long. We came home with our first ever dirt bike in the back of the minivan. Those next couple of months, as we progressed to becoming a motocross family, provided some of the best moments and memories that I've ever had. Guys, I gotta admit, I'm a little bit nervous. And I wouldn't change anything, except for, I would have done the opposite of every single thing that I did. For instance, the first thing that we did when we brought home the TTR is that I wanted the kids to hit some jumps, like right away. First thing, where's some wood? We need some wood, we need some ramps. Just barely made that. Let's get some air underneath these kids. The reason I did that is because I wanted my kids to get excited, I wanted them to get addicted, I wanted them to have the thrill of jumping through the air and knowing what it feels like to be off the ground as well as I, I wanted it, I wanted them to build confidence. I wanted them to see a double and not get intimidated by it and know that they're able to soar over it. In my defense, what we did for the most part up until that point was BMX and that's really all we did. We would build jumps, we'd build ramps, we'd find kickers and the kids would try to get some air time. Whoa. That was an awesome fall. You get you bro? <laughs> Naturally, once we got dirt bikes, we just continued doing what we knew, what we what we were familiar with. Building jumps, finding ramps, jumping over people, seeing how far these bikes could go. The second mistake I made is, actually that may have been the second thing that we did. The first thing that I did, anytime that we got a new bike, whether it was the KX65 or the TTR90, we'd go to an open field and I would just instruct the kids, pin it. Just aim it that way, twist the throttle, let the bike throw you back just so you could get an idea and understand what the bike is capable of, what it's going to do when you twist the throttle so that way you can expect it. Now, despite what TikTok commenters say, motocross is a sport and anytime that you start in a sport, if you go to any coach in any sport, they're gonna get you started on the basics. For instance, boxing. If you go to someone and ask them to teach you how to box, they're not gonna put you in front of a bag and be like, all right, let's see what you got. Let's see how hard you can hit this thing. No, they're gonna start with your feet. Here's how you set your feet. Here's how you plant your feet. Here's how your knees should be. Here's how your hips should be. Here's how your shoulders should be, your head, your, your wrists. They're gonna make you punch very slowly over and over and over until your form is right and then the power will come once you're ready. Baseball, same thing. They're not gonna put you in the batter's box and be like, okay, here you go. Swing as hard as you can. Let's see how far you can hit this ball your first try. No, again, they're gonna give you the, the, here's how to grip it. Here's where your feet should be. Here's where you should be twisting your body. Here's where you should be looking, your head, all that. Body, body positioning, body control first. Fundamentals first before you put in the power, right? Right now is 2024 and it is literally the best time to get your kids into motocross and dirt bike riding. Two reasons. One, there's more bikes, there's more introductory bikes than there ever was before. There's electric bikes which are super safe, super easy to, to uh, customize settings. The triangle stand loose. <laughs> the triangle stand is cute super low maintenance, and there's more stepping stones than ever, starting with, with a Stasic to a beginner 50 type electric bike to an advanced 50 type electric bike. But also the other advantage is training and resources, getting your kids prepared and ready to safely ride a bike without getting hurt. For instance, Edge Power Sports hosts Mini MX, which is a, a dirt bike race for kids as well as they have an indoor Stasic race. Now this is the only motocross series that I've ever seen across the United States or Canada that actually offers trainings to the beginner participants of their series. Not just in the Mini MX, but also the Stasic race. We were there, we went to the Stasic race and the kids were doing flagging. And I tell you what, man, they did a training before the race to explain to the kids technique, how to ride. And Brian, who's putting it on, even in the riders meeting, he's 
telling the kids, hey, you can get hurt out here. Body positioning, stand up, head over the bars. And you can see it on the kids. The kids that are sitting down over these sharp BMX jumps, but bounce off the seat, feed off the pegs, end over end, happens over and over. The kids that are listening, the kids that are in their proper body position are fine. They're able to roll over the jumps, they're able to take it. A mini MX is outdoor. It's faster bikes, it's higher speed. For the kids that are gonna start this series, it's even more important for you. Don't start bad habits like I did with my kids. We didn't start with the basics. They got into bad habits and we're trying to correct those now. So like I said, it's pretty cool that Edge does these clinics for the people doing this series because they want the kids to be safe. They don't want big crashes. They don't want people getting hurt. So they try to train them in advance. Not everyone is gonna be able to do the series. Not everyone is able to make the trainings, but Hold on a second. Okay, I got this right here. This is the cheat sheet. This is top secret material right here. This is the uh, information that they're gonna go over at the Mini MX training clinic for the beginners. So um, I figure since everyone can't make it, what we're gonna do, we're gonna make a video, we're gonna go over, we're gonna go over these things for you right here. Number one, Mason. Tip number one is toes. Does that hurt? You want the balls of your feet right here, and that will allow your heel to flex and give you added control and suspension. Also, want your toes faced in because the next tip is is your knees. You want your knees together to pinch the bike to control the bike. What's wrong, Mason? Get your knees back. Mason, move your toes slightly more forward. There. Shift your knees back. Put your hips back a little bit. Here, can you video? I'll do it like this. You don't want your knees over your toes. You want to make sure they're back. Okay, the ball of your foot is right here. Get, get your foot there. There. In. Just squeeze, hold that. Your toes are out. You can't really squeeze the bike like this and you're gonna give yourself knee pain from, you know, doing that. So you get your toes in and then squeeze the bike here and then here and your feet and grip the bike. What did I say about your toes? Next, your hips. The hip position can vary on what you're doing, but you want to have a slight bend in your knees. Shift your hips back. Shift your hips back a little bit. Now arch your back. Mason, unlock your hips. It's all in the hips, Mason. There you go. Perfect, like that. Well, he's, he's small, so I mean, it'd be easier if I showed you on my bike. You want your hips a little bit behind your knee. That is good. It'd be easier to explain if I was on the bike. Let's talk, you wanna get on there? Let's talk about pelvises. So what, they, what they're talking about when they say lock your hips, if your hips are forward, if they're locked, you have very little movement. But if you arch your back a little bit, all of a sudden now you've got a lot more movement, okay? Is that good or is that better than? Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you want me to back up a little bit? <laughs> Let's get a shot of these white shiny you, you shoes. You do not want your toes out, children, okay? Keep your toes in what on the ball of your grade? feet so you can move your feet up and down as the suspension works because this also, feet are also your suspension too. Feet are suspension. That's the cheapest suspension. Suspension can be very expensive. Your feet is the cheapest suspension your dads are ever going to pay for. You don't want your knees in front of your toes. Too big for this bike, but you want them about not in front of. You don't want to be riding like this. I see a lot of kids riding way too far forward and you're not able to really control the back of the bike. And also it's not good for your upper body too when you're riding. So you want to keep your knees back so you can squeeze and move the bike around with your knees. And then your hips, you want them back. You don't want already, to be like I already this. I demos. I already did that, Lillian. I talked like about this. hips. You want your hips pushed Oop. back and unlocked. You want to All right, cut to me unlock. and my hips again, guys. 
unlock your hips so you can move your legs around your hips around like this yeah because you can't move your hips around like when you're more. okay if your knees if your knees are forward to the gas tank then your hips are forward yeah and now you have no control in your hips how am i, how am I gonna control the bike now guys no way you can't do you it can't control the bike so you want your hips back a little bit but then when you're braking watch this you just shift your hips back when you're braking you don't you don't move right here you keep your whole your knees down still and you can move around depending on what you're doing accelerating and braking it's very important mason come critique her elbows where do her elbows need to be we don't want to be like this back. Uh, mason's, we don't, we don't want to be like this mason's explaining it all right. you want your elbows up children elbows up, not down, you want them up. Uh, Mason, here, you hold, hold the camera for a second. Let's talk about why you want your elbows up. So if you had to grab onto this, and I'm shaking it, put your elbows down. You don't have very much control, but if your elbows are up, like a push-up position, look at all this control she has, guys. This is crazy, all this control. Well, it's also for when you're turning, too. It's your elbows, you wanna keep your elbows up when you're turning, so you can control the bike more. You don't want your elbows down because you don't have as much control when you're turning. You want your elbows up. Okay, should we talk about sitting? Yes. I thought you never asked. We don't want you sitting very much Let's talk at about Mini sitting. MX. But when, when would they want to sit? When do you want to sit? When do you want to sit? In the corners. Okay, guys? Mm -hmm. Or if you are seat bouncing a jump, which beginners, I don't really want you guys doing that yet, but this is where you're allowed to sit. Corners? Stand up jump on faces. jumps if you're a beginner. Yes. Okay. So when you're sitting for your corner, you're gonna come and you want your weight further forward. Not too far forward, but up closer to the gas tank. And you want you to keep your elbows up. And when you're going for a corner, you want your foot up, not here, up. Turn it in, turn your toe in, and squeeze the bike with your knee, okay? The reason why it's okay to sit in turns is because it's harder to turn something or lean it over the tall it, taller it is. Different corners. Okay, not all corners. Through. Some you sit through. Okay, very important. Some you stand and some you sit. Remember that. Excellent point, Lillian. Just flat, usually you want to sit through it. But if it's a rut, you stand pretty deep into it and then sit. Or you could stand the whole way through and sit at the very end while you're accelerating. So, so we, we've been taught that you sit in the apex of the turn, you, so when you're it leaning, depends. it depends. It Unless depends. it's a sand track, if it's a sand track, then they don't tell you to sit down you could, at the apex. Well, you could do a turn, you could stand, you could stand pretty much until the bumps end and then sit down. You could stand into the middle and then sit, or you could only sit once you're really accelerating, like once you get through most of the rut and then you sit at the end while you're really getting on the gas because it is easier to accelerate when you're sitting, so. That's another time when you or sit, when you're trying to get traction. the entire way through. But I don't want you guys sitting. Well, depends on the corner, but I want to see you guys standing. And now your head, children. Head. All right, children. Head. So when you're riding, you just want your head over the bars, but when you're accelerating. Over the bars. You want your head a little more Mm -hmm. over the bars okay and the harder you accelerate the more the bike's gonna throw you back so you have to counterbalance yeah, by leaning forward you gotta keep your chest and your head forward and that is really only applicable if you don't want to turn into an internet meme because the greatest thing about motocross is a newbie getting on a bike and not leaning their head forward hitting the gas the bike throws them back. They grab on a throttle, rip it even more, which is, and then loop it out. Whiskey throttle, right into like a fence or a gazebo. That's one of my favorites. So you don't want to do that. We don't want to see any of that at Mini MX. If we see you here at Mini MX, then this is a position that we want to see you in. Just like me. You want to look just like <laughs> me, guys.